So in today's video, I have the Nike Air Zoom Pegasus 37 with React, and I wanted to go ahead and compare it to the previous version, the Air Zoom Pegasus 36, and let you guys know which ones I prefer out of the three, some of the things that I like about the 37s and some of the differences between these and the 36s. And this is from a casual and observational point of view for those wondering, but let's go ahead and get into the video. What's going on guys, Hess here, collectivekicks.com. If you guys would like to shop any of this week's top sneaker deals that I try to curate for you guys, check the link in the description. And happy shopping. Also, if you guys do wanna buy some of the 37s or the 36s, even the Infinity Reacts or the Turbos, I'll be linking those ones in the description. As I'm gonna be talking about all these shoes and kinda of how they compare against each other, and some of the things from a casual perspective that I really personally like about each of the models. There's a lot of similarities between these three models right here, but there's definitely a lot of differences. And since I've worn all these ones, I wanted to give you guys just kind of my two cents of the uh, Pegasus experience. Now, if you guys have not seen, I actually already did an independent review video of the Pegasus 37. Pros and cons, some of the things I really liked about the shoe and disliked. Uh, but if you guys want to see that video, I'll try to link it uh, in the description as well. But this is a really, really good shoe, and they made some pretty nice upgrades and changes from the Pegasus line in general uh, in this shoe. By adding React, they added a lot of softness to the midsole, much softer than anything else the Pegasus line has seen, in my opinion, thus far. And I haven't tried all of them from the beginning to end, but I have had Pegasus on and off from the late 20s up through the 37s. This time around, this shoe is definitely more cushioned than the 36s, uh, and there's a couple differences about the shoe that I really like uh, over the 36s. But 36s have a couple things that People might like more than the 37s. And then of course there's the Pegasus Turbo line, which is my personal favorite out of the group. Um, I absolutely love the Turbos, the Turbo 2s, and I've heard that they're got, kind of going away from that Turbo line, which is super unfortunate for myself because this is like one of the best things in my opinion that Nike's cooked up. But you know, I'm a cult follower of this shoe. Most people probably are not. And a lot of people have different opinions uh, of the shoes. So it is what it is, everybody has different feet. But personally, these ones are my go-to. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, talk about some of the differences between these three pairs of sneakers. I guess I'm gonna start off and go over the pros and cons of each of the three models. And I included the Infinity Reacts in this because a lot of people were saying, well, now that they have Pegasus with React in it, then these are obsolete and you don't need the Infinity Reacts and so on. But they're, they're quite different sneakers for different people's feet. But let's go ahead and get into it. We'll start off with the 37 Pros. First things first, the cushioning on the midsole is actually a little bit thicker than on the 36s, which places you a little higher off the ground than on the 36s. When I tried them both on side by side, I definitely felt taller in the 37s than the 36s, which translates for me more cushion on the bottom of your feet, which I like. The 37s also have a really nice heel toe transition, which was surprising as I mentioned in my review. There's actually a pretty big top loaded air zoom unit in the very front of the shoe right here. And I thought when you did a heel toe transition that you'd be able to feel that air unit once you hit it. But, and, and I thought it was gonna be clunky, but it honestly wasn't the case when you're walking around in these shoes. It actually felt uh, really good. And I did say walking, I know this is a running, I know that all these are running shoes, but there are running shoe channels out there that cover this from a performance perspective. I'm talking about this from a casual perspective for people like myself that wanna just wear these to walk around in or go to the gym or grocery store or whatever else you're gonna be doing. For day-to-day -day usage, these all of these shoes can be really good. So that's where I'm covering it from. Four foot cushioning is good. Speaking of that air zoom, it is really good on feet, feels great, and it definitely has a lot of bounce back in cushioning. And speaking of cushioning, that heel cushioning on the 37s is amazing. The React has definitely felt, and it's a, definitely a softer, squishier ride than the 36s in general. The tongues actually look really similar on both pairs, same sort of shape and style and stitching and everything else on the uh, the tongues. So I really like that they didn't change it because I really enjoyed what they did on the 36s as well. And part of the reason why for some people that don't know is when they attach it up to like maybe here and then leave the rest of it loose, it gives you enough wiggle room where you can loosen it and it makes it loose. You can tighten it, it makes it snug. But more importantly, when you wear them loose, for me, like the you don't get the tongue slip on each side, which you would get with the Nike Lunar Launch shoes from way back in the day. They would always slip to the left or right. It was always such a nuisance to look down and see your tongue all the way over to the side. And this fixes that so it doesn't really shift around. It stays in one spot, but you still get the flexibility that you need for the shoe to be able to come on and off 
and to wear loosely, which is something that I personally prefer. The traction of the shoe is actually pretty good, and the flex groove that they added right here on the 37 is actually welcome as well. I also did notice there's a really deep cut right here on the inside of the shoe, uh, which kind of gives it an arc-like feel, and maybe adds to the comfort of the sneaker, but I noticed it's definitely not there on the previous version. It's very, very deep on the newer one, and I think it probably adds to the comfort. They also do offer extra wide versions of the Pegasus 37, which I think is a huge plus. As for some of the cons, as I was carrying groceries in from outside after it rained, I slipped around a little bit in my kitchen, kind of took me off guard, was not expecting that, but definitely felt a little bit slippery, uh, which could be honestly said probably about any of these sneakers. You just have to be careful when you walk anyway. I don't really love the pointiness of that heel, but it is what it is. That is another, I guess, sort of con. And I guess the last con, these are 120 at retail, but the 36s can now be picked up for like 50 bucks. So. That's a con for the 37s because this is a lot of bang for the buck for $50. It's a $70 difference between the 37s and the 36s. So for those people where money is tight, I mean, you get a lot of bang for your buck now in the 36s. This was a $120 shoe that you can get now on sale because it's a late model. So I think that that's something that's really good for those people that need a really good bargain. But speaking of the Pegasus 36 or the Air Zoom Pegasus 36, some of the pros about this one is just Similar to the 37s, it's a great all-around sneaker. It's a really versatile shoe. You can wear these for a lot of different activities, but I also know that runners actually run in these shoes as well. Like the Air Max line was never really one that people would run in Nike shoes in. They would run in the Pegasus though. The Pegasus 36 had a full-length Air Zoom unit. I will say for a pro, for those people out there though, that prefer a firmer ride on your feet, they don't like the soft like squishiness of the Nike React, you're probably better off staying with the Pegasus 36. In my opinion, Nike probably should do different offerings, one with full length Zoom, one with React, and then the Pegasus Turbo with React and Zoom X. I think that that would probably be the best thing to do because as I mentioned in my review video of the 37s, I hope that Nike is not alienating some of their core audience that really like the snappiness and the feel of the Pegasus 36s and so on with the changes that they made to the 37s to appease more of that cloudy, like uh, squishy cushioned comfort sneaker people like myself. Similar to the 37s though, there's good traction, it's breathable, and it's the least expensive of all the pairs that are out here. That's obviously a huge pro. Some of the cons though, it's not the lightest shoe in the world. There's a lot of other light options out there. Not a very soft midsole either. For me, that's a con. And overall, this shoe to me is just extremely average but average in the best way possible. And moving on to the Pegasus Turbos, there is a Pegasus Turbo 2 in the backdrop and a couple in my garage as well. I absolutely love these ones as I've already mentioned. I'm totally biased to this shoe because of the cushioning setup on this. We'll start off with the pros. It does feature Zoom X and React both. I missed that in my initial review. You guys pointed it out to me because frankly, Nike didn't promote it very well and they haven't continued to promote it very well. You can see where the black line is of the midsole here. This is actually uh, Zoom X and then this bottom la layer down here that actually says Zoom X is Nike React And that's why the bottom is more durable than the top because this Nike Zoom X material is not very durable at all However, it is super super squishy the most cloud-like thing and soft and squishy thing that Nike has It's also extremely lightweight and for comparison. I do have the Zoom Vaporfly 4% It's the very first pair of Nikes as well as probably the first running sneakers on the market that feature that carbon fiber plate in the middle of the shoe, sandwiched between Zoom X. It's an insane rocket feel on your feet as you're running and stuff. Uh, I didn't run in these, I wore these casually, which was kind of a mistake. It doesn't really work for casual, so I found that. So I've been staying away from the carbon fiber sneakers since then because it's just not a good sensation to be rocking while you're walking around. But all of these shoes are made for runners, and I know that a lot of people run marathons and stuff in these shoes as well, and they're really lightweight comparison to the regular Pegasus line. Um, all in all, the midsole is what makes this shoe for me though. It's so incredibly comfortable. For me, it's crazy soft and squishy. Like it's the squishiest of the three by far. And I've tried them all on side by side by side. This one definitely has the most like squish feel in my feet. Um, the upper is pretty nice as well. It's breathable. And I like the little accents and the details that they have on the upper. I do like that the tongue is a little bit more plush on the Turbo 1s. The Turbo 2s, they don't have the plush tongue, but they're more like the regular Pegasuses, and both of them are okay. I just actually like the feel of the Pegasus uh, 1 the best. But all in all, these ones retail at 180 though, so a little bit more expensive. If you can get these on sale, I've posted them for around $100 as well. I mean, I think that if you're paying 120 for these and you like a soft and squishy feel, but you can get these ones on sale, maybe not in a very good colorway. 
like personally, I would take these over the 37s and that's just my feet. I just really, really like this model and I've had a bunch of them and, and I've just beat this one up tremendously. As you could see, uh, they're pretty dirty, but yeah, so this one is just one of my favorites out of the group. So I'm completely biased. Cons, it's expensive, $180. And also that widow's peak on the back is pretty aggressive and people have been known to split this material off and break that off in the back section of the shoe, which is kind of crazy and terrible. So hopefully if they do come out with another one, they can taper that thing back. And then lastly, you have the Infinity React. This shoe is a really comfortable pair of sneakers, $160 on the price point. And these, the React on this is really big. Compared to the 37s, the 37s actually look like it has more React, but I would say personally that the Infinity React is more felt. Maybe it's because the distribution is wider on a wider base because as you can see on this one, uh, it's a lot narrower in comparison to the extra wide version of the Infinity Reacts. Both of these have really breathable uppers, but I would say the Infinity React wins in this one as well. The upper is really well designed. So for those people that like that sock-like fit, I think that this one is probably a better uh, way to go than these. It's tough to say, honestly, uh, both of these are really extremely good shoes. I really like this Infinity React though, better than the Epic Reacts. I've done some reviews on these as well after wearing them for a couple months and I really like this shoe. The React in the forefoot is actually really felt uh, more so than in a lot of the other models, especially the Epic Reacts. So they increase the amount of React on these shoes and the overall design of them are, are just really well done. Uh, so this is a really nice, comfortable pair of sneakers. Uh, again, well-rounded, you can do lots of different things with them. I mean, so I guess in summary, by looking at all of these other ones out here, if I had to rank them in order of my favorite to least favorite, it would probably go something like this. My favorite one is the most expensive one, but it is my favorite for sure, the uh, Turbos. And then next, personally, I really like the Infinity Reacts. A strong third, but I really do like the Pegasus 37s as well. The additions that they made to this shoe makes it more tailored to my feet than maybe somebody that doesn't like the Nike React and the extra squishing on your feet. In a very, very proud last place, fourth place here, I would go with the Pegasus 36. That's just my personal preference on my feet. But again, if money's the issue and you only have 50 or $60 for a pair of running sneakers, these ones are a great deal for 50 or $60. Like you can find some of them for really, really good prices. Even on eBay, brand new in box, um, you can get them for really, really good prices. And I'll link all of these again in the description. But that's kind of my thoughts and the comparisons between the different models. I think that they're all really good shoes. So it's just picking and choosing of which little features you like better than the previous model or the other like variations of Nike running sneakers. At the end of the day, everybody has different feet. Everybody has different preferences. And you know, some people are gonna run in them, some people are gonna use them casually, some people are gonna do both. And ultimately all I could do is just give you guys the information based on my experience with what we have. But if you guys have a different experience and you guys wanna share with others, drop a comment in the comment section and let others know what you feel about the 37s or the other models that I've talked about in this video. Something that I may have said that you think is misleading people, other things that affirm what I have said is actually true. Always love to see those comments. But thank you guys for stopping by and watching. Hopefully this video has been informative to you guys. And uh, if you guys did like the video, drop a like on the video. It definitely supports the cause, considering how much money all of these cost on the table. But uh, have a good rest of the day. Subscribe if you're new to the channel. Notification bell to be notified of when my videos are posted. And hopefully we'll see you guys again soon. Peace, guys.